But I'm going to tell you right now, God's going to make a distinction. And I'm going to tell you, listen to me, there's going to come a separation like you've never seen. You know what I'm talking about? There's going to come a separation where people are going to say, you know what? Definitely, he is a Christian. I went down the other day to apply for a job. And I'll probably go to work there. And uh, we went down to Jason Lopez and I. I went down to Chloride. It was early in the morning, the other morning Wednesday morning. And uh, <clears throat> got down there and talked to Jason. He said, well, do you want to, work? Do you want to apply for it? And I said, sure. Let's go down there and talk to the lady. And uh, so we went down there and took our applications with us. So we went in there. There's this lady behind the counter back there, big old girl. Friendly, big. She's the main boss, you know. I'm thinking, okay, she's the main boss, is she? Okay. And, uh, you know, you treat people with respect. I don't care who they are. So we went in there, and, and she said, Hi, Jason, because Jason had been down there bothering her before, because he's, you know, he's part of the fire department. He works down there in the firehouse station 39, so he's the one who told me about it. And I said, Well, we got down there, and, and she said, uh, Well, uh, did you bring your schedules? And I said, I ain't got no schedule, man. He's got a schedule. I don't. I don't, I don't have no job. I don't have no schedule. Oh, did you? No, I didn't bring my schedule. He's, and she said, well, are you part of the fire department? I said, well, yes and no. I said, I'm a volunteer, but I'm a chaplain. And she goes, oh, dude, you don't want to work here. I said, why not? She said, because I got the most devilish bunch you've ever seen in your life. I said, hey, it's okay. I'll change all of them. And I said it like that without thinking. I'm not going to change it. But, you know, uh, and then... Last night, Cody called me and he says, Joel quit. And I said, well, why? And he said, because he couldn't take the devils. Too many devils down there. And it's too unsafe. And I said, well. And he told me, he says, don't even worry about going to work down there. But I haven't given up yet. But uh, in the midst of this ugly situation that we walk in, hey, we're the only light they have. We, we, you know, Jesus Jesus didn't come to the religious crowd, did He? He told them they were snakes and thieves and who knows what else He called them by name. He came to those that were poor and wretched and broke. Didn't have no hope. That's who Jesus came for. And you know, sometimes the most ugliest, meanest, unworthy people, they're the people that come to church and make the best Christians. You know what I'm talking about, right? And some of the people you would expect to be really easy to get, they won't even listen to you. i got to quit. Are you listening to me, though? We have to have a foundation called the Bible. The Word of God. You've got to stay in the book. You've got to read. you got to ask the Lord to help you. Let me, let me give you one more scripture before I quit. Let me just read these scriptures. Amos 8 and 11, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread or thirst, but a hearing of the word. There's a famine in the land, folks. It's called the hearing of the word. Man, everybody, everybody has a book. But it's a lack of, it's a famine for hearing. They're just, they just, it's, it's, you know. They, they'd rather watch TV. They, they'd rather, whatever. I wonder if people are going to be stuck in front of their, their TV on, on Super Bowl Sunday when Jesus comes back. Hey, Jesus, I, I, wait a minute. Pittsburgh's playing. I hope they get beat, by the way. Let me read this. 2 Peter 3 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. How many of you God's not slack? Let me read this just for the sake of hell. Let me read this. The Bible says in Revelation 20, I'm going to quit with these two last verses. Revelation 20, 14 and 15, the Bible says, In death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Everybody say lake of fire. You think he's just joking? You think it's real? This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book in the book of life, what happened to him? He was cast into the lake of fire. 
Now tell me how you got around that, please. All of you Christians who believe there is no hell, tell me what you saw that got you over that hump. Because let me read you in that scripture. Revelation 21, 7. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whosoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. See, there's two things going on here. You're either written in the book or you're not written in the book. You're either going to the hellfire or you're not. Because there is a distinction. Can you hear what I said? And I'm not saying, you know what, listen to me real plain. Listen to me real plain. I'm not concerned about hell. Jesus is my Savior. I'm born again. I'm just saying, why do they remove it? There's got to be a reason somewhere that they're doing this for you. And it's because they want to live like they want to live. And they don't want to have that threat. But the Bible says, if your name's not written in the Lamb's book of life, I'm sorry. It's all about the lake of fire for you. And you know what? Listen to me. If you're making excuses why you don't want to live for God, you don't have to make excuses. Just don't do it. You don't have to live for God. How many of you know God never forced anybody to serve? You can go and do your thing. Just go have at it. And God will just sit back and say, Hey, you just have at it, boy. I am not going to step in your way. But you know what? It's a heavy price to pay. Thank you. Because I want to tell you something. Eternity is a long time. And all these people who are promoting trash, they're going to answer to God for it. They're going to answer to God. And you know, the, the, this sounds mean and cruel and hateful, but I can't wait for Jesus to set up His kingdom. And you might say, well, why does it sound cruel and hateful? Because I want these people to see that there is a God. And they're going to answer to it. Let me tell you what the Bible says. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus, that Jesus is Lord. He's not going to talk, he's not going to ask you about Muhammad. He's not going to ask you about Buddha. He's not going to, he's not even concerned about that bunch of devils. Read my lips, they're all devils. You say, no, they're God. No, they're devils. Jesus is Lord. He's the only one who was found worthy to open the book in the book of Revelation. You know, the Bible, I've never seen his name Muhammad in here, have you? How about, how about Buddha? Now he ain't in there. It's always interesting to me. I'm gonna, uh, it's always interesting to me. I've said this a few times, but nobody ever says, oh, Jesus Christ. They always say that. Jesus Christ. Why? If they said, oh, Buddha, I would think, well, that was interesting. But they don't. They say Jesus Christ. God damn this thing. You say you're cursing in church. No, I'm trying to make a point. There's power in the name of the King. Yes. There's no power in the life. There's no life or power in the rest of them devils. That's the reason that nobody says <clears throat> or whatever they are. Mom, whatever his crazy name is, I don't know. You know why? Because ain't no power. He's a dead dog. Maybe he lived, but he's dead. He's not risen from the dead. All right, I'm done. I hope I made.